Molweni Ninjani Namsanj Ninjani Ninjani Neapila 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 Gwili Kala Impilo Ninjani Gwili Ikala Hello everybody Are you okay? Are you good? So, in today's video, I decided to go big. To go big. Or go home. Go home and guess what I chose? Guess what I chose? I chose to go big, of course, and the big hat wrap with the colors and being big. So today's look is inspired by none other than Madusini. Let me spell that for you. That's M A D O S I N I Madusini Madosini. If you're not South African, you're probably wondering who is that? Who? And if you are South African and you don't know her, you're probably wondering the same thing. You're probably wondering the same thing. Don't worry. Don't you dare worry. Let me show you a picture of Madosini. She did not play when it comes to head wraps. They were always beautiful, beautiful, bright, beautiful, and colorful. And for me, I decided to just put a twist into it. You know what? Since my favorite color is pure black and pure white, I thought in terms of head wraps, let me just go black because I just want to put a bit of like a dark color since you want to fall asleep today. You want to fall asleep right now, so I decided to use the color black and then. I also wanted a pop, pop, pop of color. So I was like, what pops better than red? Red. Fiery red. Fiery red. Fiery red always pops. Always, 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 always pops. So I popped with fiery red. I'm actually am abomvu. My red earrings. Nindya mufagem kaleni abomvu, and my red neck piece that's matching. And in terms of head wraps, you know that hair red head wraps were always like popping with color. So I chose to pop with red. With red. Inye Zimbini Zindatu Zine Zintlanu. I had red pins in a line a 
as well so that they could match my earrings and my neck piece so nda fagile into ezibomvu sokufakela inhloko ezinhlanu ezenze umqolo ezenze umgca and then koko sabe sifana namacici am nento kufaka emqaleni ndaqaba ke nasimlonyeni into ebovu chwe into yami yokuqaba emlonyeni ibovu chwe and then to top things off I wore a fiery red lipstick 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 to honor Madocini I have no idea what I'm doing right now but I hope you guys will enjoy today's video with all its randomness but of course you wanna know who was Madosini? What did she do exactly? What did Madosini do? Who was she? Who was she? Who was she? Why ban kanye kanyo Madosin? Why sin san don? Kau stele lengai? Kau ke stele les funukwas? Don't worry. I will drop some knowledge about today's inspiration in terms of look. Matosini. La Dozi Matosini Mbasha was born on the 25th of December in 1943 and unfortunately passed away on the 23rd of December in 2022. She was a South African musician and she was known for playing Hosa traditional music popularly known for playing Hosa traditional musical instruments like musical instruments Hosa musical instruments playing Hosa traditional musical instruments like Uadi Uadi Um Hobe and then Um Hobe musical bows and Isit Olo Tolo Isit Olo Tolo she was famous for that she was famed for for that Madosini performed under the name Madosini and was regarded as a national treasure in her field national treasure in her field okay now that you know who inspired today's look i think what today's video is all about and um yeah don't you agree don't you agree that we should get started with the topic of the day so for today's topic i wanted to talk about the kings and queens of africa because i went back and i was lazy to write a script and do my own research so what did i do instead i went to the internet and asked chat gpt to write me a script for today's video 
does ChatGPT really know about African history? We're about to find out. Why? Because the future is here. The future is now, now, now. So, upon asking ChatGPT to write me a script about the kings and queens of Africa, this is what I found out. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. It started off with the queen. And it said, the title given to me by ChatGPT is South African Royalty, a historical journey true kings and queens and then and then and then it went on to say this is what i should say for the introduction i should say this smiling and with enthusiasm welcome back history lovers Today, we are embarking on the captivating journey through the fascinating world of South African kings and queens. So, let's dive right in and explore the incredible tales of South African royalty so let's just jump right into it straight 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 into it into it into it into it and then for segment one we have the queen of sheba the Hosa Queen Nungause. Hold on, Chat GPT. I've heard about Nungause. I've heard about Nungause. But one thing I will tell you about her is that from what I've heard about her, she was not a queen. If there are any South Africans watching this right now and know her as a queen, let me know. All I know about Nongause is that she deceived a lot of people. Nongause led to... I just want to put this nicely, but I don't have a way of putting it nicely, but... Let me just tell you about Nun Raouze and then you, you figure it out for yourself. Let's start with what it says about her. It says, the queen of Sheba, the queen, the closer queen Nun Raouze. Turning our attention to the Xhosa kingdom, we encounter a significant historical event led by a young girl named Nongause. She claimed to have received visions from the ancestors foretelling the expulsion of British settlers if the Xhosa people sacrificed their cattle. Unfortunately, this led to a devastating famine and profound changes in the region. Discover the intriguing history of this enigmatic queen and the impact of her visions in the Xhosa, on the Xhosa people. 
Okay, let me tell you more about Nongawuse and who she was exactly. I remember being a little girl and hearing stories about Nongawuse from my grandmother. My grandmother would tell us a lot of stories and she did tell us a story about Nongawuse and this is what I know about her. This part is not from ChatGPT because I was like, uh-uh, I cannot let ChatGPT lie to us. <laughs> let me refresh my memory when it comes to Nongawuse, who she was and what she did exactly. So, let's learn more about Nongawuse. So, Nongawuse was born in 1841. Where was she born? Near the Kaha River. Kaha, 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 Kaha River. That's G X A R H A. Um, in the Cape Colony in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa okay she then lost her life or passed away in 1898 Kwakona Kutaha the Cape Colony in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. What I know her as being is prophet. Not necessarily a queen, but an alleged prophet. And she was famous for leading. She was famous for leading the Kosa Kettle Unaliving Movement and famine that took place in 1856 up until 1857 okay let's get into that so one morning in 1856 a 14 year old horse girl named Nongawuse went with another girl to scare beds in Daka from her uncle's crops in the field by the sea at Daka River Mount in the present day wild coast area of South Africa. Nongawuse wahamba nomnito mbazana baba baye masimini beyokuyikisa okanye beyokususa intaka ezasitya izityalo ezityalo yamasimini kumalume wakhe that's what i remember um, from the story of nongawuse so when she returned back home that day she said that she had seen a man who had told her something okay so everybody was gathered in to hear what this man told Nongawuse when she came back and Nongawuse said that the whole community would rise from the dead that all cattle now leaving in order that for that to happen all the cattle that is leaving must be slaughtered and then she said that she met this man and this man said that for the British um, like war to be over and all she must go back to her community and tell uh, the community members that everybody in the community would rise again and would rise from the dead and that all the cattle that they have leaving must be slaughtered 
and then the girl returned back home Nyan Gunungause after being told this by the man. She returned back home and told um her family and the members of the community what had happened. And however Nungause uh described one of the men um who they were exactly and Nungause described the man who told her this how he was and what he looked like. I mean Nungause's uncle he was a diviner and then he recognized the description as that of his dead brother and he became convinced that Nungause was telling the truth okay and then what happened next kwenze kanto unemveni koko kwenze kanto kasixelele kasixelele kwenze kanto unemveni koko what happened next what happened next what happened next what happened is that some people believed Nungause and other people didn't they were like mm -mm, there's no way she's not telling them the truth so everybody was divided in terms of believing what she had said because others believed her to be a young prophetess and her uncle is a diviner so you know people were here and there in terms of believing her as a, as a matter of fact between april of 1856 and june of 18 57 various sections of the Hosa people in the eastern Cape province a trans guy slaughtered um, enormous stocks of their cattle and deliberately killed their crops so the eastern cape was rich in terms of agriculture they had a lot of cattle and they had a lot of um like fertile land where they grew their crops to eat and no also said if you do not want the british to colonize us you must destroy everything after you've destroyed everything the british will not conquer us and everything that we have killed will come back and come back in abundance so that's exactly what the people did um so Unungause and her uncle umshala gaza said that those who appeared to them were the spirits of their ancestors okay their dead ancestors who had come back into life in order to bring the Xhosa nation back into its former glory and to render the Xhosa the assistance they required in order to drive the white men out of their land. So a few days later Umshalak Aza met with the spirits himself he claims and said that um, all the dead of the Tosa nation would rise again and that they would come up out of the sea bringing with them new and uncontaminated cattle along with sheep goats and dogs and every other animal they wanted and all the clothes and everything they could wish for to eat and all kinds of things for their houses as well the cattle said Nungause were at present in the underground covens waiting to arise and start a new world for the purified Hosa people on the day of their coming she promised the blind would see the deaf would hear cripples would walk and the whole Tosa nation would rise from the dead and begin the golden age without disease death or misfortune that is what 
known I will say is famous for and unfortunately a lot of people believed Ununga and they ended up killing their cattle and um, their crops and as a result they suffered from severe famine which is amongst one of the reasons why the Tosa people also like some of them lost their wealth it's because they believed what Nungawuse had said as well as her uncle and they followed their instructions and destroyed all their wealth and unfortunately lost their lives because of that and that's it about Nungawuse and I think it's time to move on to a queen that we can all agree was a queen or in South Africa okay okay great but let me I'd like to hear your thoughts on Ununawuse like what do you think about people believing her and what what's your take on what she had said and what she had done I would really love to hear your thoughts on this matter Africa. Now I think it's time for us to move on and to talking about a queen that we can all agree on them being a queen in South Africa. So um, that is Queen Noloiso Sandile. Let's talk about the warrior queen of Amahahabe Kingdom. Who is the warrior queen of the Amahahabe Kingdom? Before I get started, this is something I should have probably mentioned before the start of the video. A queen in Kosa is called Ikumkanikazi. A queen, Ikumkanikazi. And a king is called Ikumkani. King, Ikumkani. A queen, Ikumkanikazi. So, now we're going to talk about Ikumkanikazi, the warrior queen of the Amahahabe kingdom. So, who is she? Okay. From the Tosa kingdom, we travel all the way, all the way to the Amahahabe kingdom. Amahahabe kingdom to meet the remarkable the remarkable warrior queen, the warrior queen of Amahahabe kingdom, known as Queen Noloiso Sandile. 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 Umkanikazi unoloiso sandile. Okay, she was a fearless leader who fought for the rights and empowerment of her people. Her efforts in preserving Hosa traditions and heritage and her immense respect and admiration. Come with us as we celebrate the life and achievements of this powerful queen, Noloiso Sandile Kumkanikazi. So, who is she exactly? Let's talk more about that. Queen Ikumkanikazi Unoloiso Sandile 
was born as Nomusa Zulu. Nomusa. That's her maiden name. Nomusa. In the Xhosa culture, you have a name that you're given by your family. But once you get married and you um you're now a wife on your day of marriage your in-laws particularly the mother-in-law gives you a new name you take on your husband's last name and you now have a new name new first name and the second and your last name which is a surname is your husband's so she was given the name Noloiso once she got married but before getting married her name was Nomusa meaning grace Nomusa meaning grace once she got married she was called Noloiso Ukoyisa is to conquer Ukoyisa is to win in a war the one who wins at war Noloiso Sandile is her last name so um, she was born on the 24th of July in 1963 and she unfortunately lost her life on the 8th of July in 2020 and she was a South African royal she unfortunately lost her life to you know that thing that happened during the pandemic with the COV yeah she lost her life to co you know what we can't use the actual name on youtube so that's what she lost her life to in 2020 and in Kosa, in the Kosa kingdom we call her ah no loiso in the Kosa culture ah is what you use for a royal a queen so um in other con cultures or english you say your majesty and then you bow in Kosa we say ah no lo hizo. so it's ah no lo hizo, so that you can know that she is royalty and um yeah she was born kwanongoma kwazulu kwanongoma and she was the queen of Amahahabe in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. And um, she lost her life in Mdanzane in East London, Emondi in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa at the age of 56 in 2020. Okay, and she was buried only in King Williamstown in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa a town near East London okay now let's talk about her early life Princess Nomusa Kapeka Zulu was the daughter of the Zulu King Upeku Zulu Ka Solomon the king had a couple of wives so Unomusa was the daughter of um, Queen Mavis Zungu popularly known as Nlunkulu Kwabini. Her siblings amongst others include Ugudwil Kabek Azulu, Prince Mbonisi and Princess Tembi Kabeka Zulu Ndlovu. Nomusa attended Star of the Sea High School and 
furthered her studies at Kwakrikazi College of Education. And then in terms of marriage, in 1990, in 1988, Nomusa married a royal house of the Amakhahabe monarch, Makhobaya Kauleza Sandile. Makhobaya Kauleza Sandile. The Sandile family in the nation of Amakhahabe honored her with the name Noloiso as she undertook royal duties serving as queen consort. The couple had two children, Prince Nomahaha, Princess Nomahahabe, who was born in 1990, as well as King Jongo Olo Sandile, who was born in 1992. Following the death of her husband in 2011, Noloiso took on as the ruling queen of the Amahahabe kingdom up until she lost her life in 2020 during the pandemic so that is it about O Queen Noloyiso you are probably wondering what is Khakhabe? Why is the queen of Khakhabe? Why is she not the queen of Amakosa? Well, I suggest you watch this video to learn more about that. But for a bit of background on the Khakhabe and who they are, the Khakhabe house is the second senior house right hand house of the Kosa kingdom its royal palace is in the former sky so okay so the eastern cape was divided into two transkai and sky if you're from transkai you probably look down upon because like oh you're from the village village you know you're from the village but if you're from the sky you look you know high and might in a pawn because you posh and all that so there are those divisions and i explain them in my video as well and then she was um uh, okay it says its royal palace is in the former the sky and its counterpart in the former Transkai, Galeka, which is the great house of Upalo. The Khakhabe house was founded by Khosa warrior Khakhabe, who was the older brother of Galeka Kapalo. I talk about the two brothers in my Kosa video and the history of Kosa people and how it came about because when it comes to the Kosa people there are so many different tribes and one may wonder why so many different tribes why 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 what happened well I explain more about those in that video I would suggest you checking it out um for example i am Kosa, right i made Kosa video i'm Kosa, but i come from the amampondo kingdom i'm from the pondoland so everybody keeps asking me where are you from i'm like i'm from the eastern cape so if you want to know where in the eastern cape i am from the pondoland i belong to the Pondo kingdom. 
ama mpondo ndili mpondo so there are many people so many different people in the Xhosa culture and they sometimes speak different kinds of Xhosa for example i speak isimbondo but don't worry don't worry don't worry don't worry in my videos i speak isikhosa isikhosa isimbondo is not recognized as a formal language and many other like Xhosa tribe languages are not recognized as formal languages either and when i move from the ponderland to other parts of the world or other parts of south africa or other parts of the eastern cape you speak Xhosa and not isimbondo okay great great but guess what guess who spoke isimbondo madosini Madosini was speaking Isimbondo, she did not care. And at times when I speak Isimbondo, you wouldn't understand what I'm saying. Let me make an example. <laughs> Let me make an example. Right? I'm from the Ponderland and I, you know, move all around the world, all around the country to you meet up with a lot of people who are coming from different parts of the Eastern Cape for example from the Ponderland and you meet up with someone who is from Port Elizabeth if you're from the Ponderland and you meet with someone who's from Utrebeja there are terms they wouldn't understand but I as a Ponderland lady know the difference between this and Bondo and this is closer and i speak closer to you guys because if i speak is in bondo there's chances of you not being able to be understood by many other people who speak is it closer you know what i mean so let me make an example um is it closer people who the people who jokingly say that mfondin mfondin because a lot of closer speaking people say mfondin 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 is more like a way of saying dude you know in in, in english you say hey dude what's up dude you know like dude so in closer people usually say mfondin mfondin which is a closer way of saying dude i'm fondin itin into i'm fondin so in Isimbondo, you don't say Mfondini, you say Mdambim, Mdambim. So a lot of people like, you say what? What is that? Like, what do you mean? It's because people don't understand Isimbondo. But um, I'm just like grateful that I got to be exposed to that despite it not being recognized as a language and a lot of people not um you know understanding it and if you um anyway like i told you guys i think i should end things off with a, a king don't you guys think who should i talk about what does chat gpt say it says the third monarch of a democratic south africa king goodwill Zuelitini. Our journey wouldn't be complete without acknowledging South Africa's modern day monarchs. King Goodwill Zuelitini, a reigning monarch of the Zulu Kingdom, holds a significant place in the hearts of his people. Beyond being a ceremonial figure, he has worked tirelessly into uplifting his community and preserving Zulu traditions. Learn more about the enduring legacy of this beloved king. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So you can learn more about O King Goodwill Zueli Tini here in this article. Let's see. Let's wait. 
let's wait let's wait let's wait i am so sorry guys i'm running out of memory and i have about three minutes left so i will continue kings and queens next time when i'm more like energetic and into it and i will do my own research because chat gpt bombastic side eye um, anyway for the conclusion this is what chat gpt said uh, and you have it let's wait let's wait let's see let's see let's see let's see okay so chat gpt said i should say this for my conclusion and there you have it we i guess me and chat gpt hope you enjoyed this glimpse into the captivating world of south african royalty until next time keep exploring keep learning keep celebrating the diverse heritage of our extraordinary world the end so there you have it from chat gpt um i would give chat gpt's work a three out of ten okay just thirty percent I wanted to hear more i wanted to you know i wanted more and it was just like too vague and it was too you know i didn't really get the va va voom from it hence i'm giving it 30 percent but okay if you guys really want to learn more and want to see more i will definitely make sure that i do my research and talk about more kings and queens of south africa let me know if you want to see more or not because there's definitely plenty more kings and queens and i can take you through them if that's what you're interested in learning about from me Good night, goodbye, good day, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.